Before we start this video, I wanted to say thank you for 100 plus subscribers. I started this channel a month ago and I didn't think it would grow this fast. Thank you so much and you are all awesome. I'm going to show you almost everything you need to know about list comprehension. What this video is going to cover is how to use it, but not really how it works. This video will have chapters, so if you need to, you can skip through it to what you're looking for. If you're trying to hop around the video, if you're just returning to find something, but let's go ahead and jump into the video. In our example, we're going to create a word. It's going to be a type of string. And in that we're going to store I am word. Now our goal is going to be to get every individual character within this word and then output that to a list and print it. So before we get into methods of list comprehension, we first need to know what it is. So let's take an example. I have a function called get letters wrong because we're getting the letters in the wrong way. It returns a list type. You always want to specify what you're returning. So in this function, we're going to create a temporary local list and then we're going to loop through every letter in the word. So for letter in word, we're going to loop through each letter and then append that to our local list. Once we're finished, we're going to just return the local list and then print it. And you can see that there's an issue. We're printing out every character, not every letter, but every character that includes spaces. So we are getting what we expected, but we're also getting spaces. Now list comprehension allows you to replace this. What we have now is going to be letters wrong. We're sticking with the wrong way to do this, but comprehension. Now, again, we need to return a list. So we're going to start with returning a list. So the setup for our list comprehension is first start with your brackets. And then we're going to stick with the building blocks to be able to do more crazy stuff. So how we were in the function doing our for loop I actually should probably keep that up and we can just scroll it down there so you can actually visualize what we're doing here. You're going to structure this the exact same way. We're still looping through the list. The only difference is we're surrounded by the brackets, right? This is your loop. Thinking about how the first example worked, we appended letter to the list. Well, in list comprehension, you don't need to create that temporary list. Furthest to the left, you have your output. I'm just gonna write output for now. This is where your output is. For us, it's gonna be letter. And what we essentially have here is a one-liner of the original function. Now let's uncomment the second print here, and then we'll run it. And it's exactly the same thing. And there's nothing that's really changed besides that we've knocked it down to one line versus having a bunch of lines, like five lines. So there's two benefits. You have the simplicity of one line and you also get efficiency because for the most part, list comprehension does normally perform faster than doing a regular for loop. But you always want to verify that because it could be different in your situation. If you want to see a speed test of list comprehensions to other methods of looping, there should be an info card up top that links to my video where I did show the speeds of different methods of looping. All right, let's do one more example and then we'll pick up the pace of this video because again, I don't want to make this video too long. It might be a 12 minute video. Now for the second example, we're calling this get letters right because the only difference is that we're checking if there's an empty space, not an empty string because this technically is still not an empty string because the space is considered a character. So we can't check if the string is empty. Keep in mind you would probably want to just strip the blank spaces if you really just needed the letters of the word versus adding the extra code here but you could also throw that into list comprehension we're not going to do that in this video though and if we output it we get just the letters which is what we were looking for originally so let's go ahead and make this in a list comprehension version let's build upon what we've already learned so we know how to loop through and then put out an output but let's add on an if statement now so what we would do to the furthest of the right if letter does not equal an open space as we had before, then allow the output to return. If it's an open space, then don't return the output is what we're saying. So if we find an open space, we're not going to return anything. We're going to skip through that iteration and keep going. And I'll just go ahead and add another print Then we can run this example here. And you see that again, we're getting the same results. Now, this video is about to pick up pace a little bit because now that you have the foundation, you don't need as much explanation. I will take this point to add a good motto. Whenever you're trying to learn anything in programming break it into three parts it's not going to be a single day type thing you need to know how to use it how it works and when to use it i find that method to work best to learn programming at least just for me but i assume this would help others because if you learn how to use it then you know what to do with it but then once you learn how it works you understand the inner workings of it through like documentation and what happens in the background which kind of gives you an idea when to use it and then when you know when to use it, then you also know when not to use it. So keep that in mind, how to use it, how it works, when to use it. 
I want to try to get you more engaged with this video so that you can learn a little bit more as you're watching. So when we finish the example, pause the video, deconstruct what I made here in list comprehension, and then reconstruct it back in a for loop form in a function. Doing that allows you to understand what it looks like in list comprehension form and then in its standard form. All right, so starting from where we left off last, we built our output, our for loop, and our if. It's also possible to throw on an and statement, just as you would on a regular if statement. You can tag on and letter does not equal. In our case, we're going to say I because we want to get rid of the word I as well. We don't want that word. If we run that, you see that we have the am world part, the A-M-W-O-R-D. All right, and that's the full and example. So take the time to reconstruct this in its own form in a function without it being on one line. So you can understand the placement of everything and you can start to remember and understand how to deconstruct and reconstruct these back and forth. So we can also add else to our comprehension, but there's a difference when you add else. So we're starting out with our letter, our output, or letter in word. Whenever you want to add else, you don't write your if statement on the right. You actually have to put your if statement in between your output, which is letter in this case, and your loop. Same for the else. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say if letter, does not equal an empty space else exclude. Before I explain it, I do want to run it. And you can see that we have I exclude, AM exclude, WORD. What we're doing here is we now have two outputs. Instead of just having letter, we're checking if it's a blank space. Rather than just skipping over the blank space, we're passing out our second output, exclude. Now this could be anything. You could actually wrap this in a function, perform whatever operations you need to. We're not there yet in the video, but keep that in mind. You now have two outputs. Letter being your output, which is if it meets your condition, in our case, not being a empty space, then we'll return letter. If you're not familiar with comprehension, this is a good time to pause, deconstruct, and reconstruct this back into its form so that you can understand how it's written without being in list comprehensions. Let's actually mix and and else together. All right, so using our previous example, we can actually tack on and as well. Just like any if statement, you can always add and to the right of it. So in our case, we'll check and letter does not equal I. Now we're checking for a blank space and I as well. If we run that, you'll see that now we get exclude, exclude, AM, exclude, WRD. That's because we're also excluding the I and as well as the spaces. You can also replace and with or. If you haven't noticed, this is starting to become a little bit long to look at, like for your eyes to actually figure out what's going on. This would actually be a lot more to understand. And if you haven't seen your code in a while or someone else is reviewing your code, using too many list comprehensions can start to be bad for readability, which goes into the con of using list comprehensions. So up until now, we've been using letters. Let's switch up and do something different for a function. We're going to go ahead and define a list, a list of numbers. And then we're gonna create a function within a function, not normally something you would want to do, but just for this example, we're going to do it. In this inner function, we're taking a value of integer. We're going to return that value plus 10. Now at the final return, we have num for num in nums. And it's the same as the letter for letter in word, but instead we're looking for the number. Now you wanna pass this to a function. To do that, we're just going to go ahead and wrap the number here. Instead, we'll wrap it in parentheses, and then we'll do the add 10. If we go ahead and run this, our result are 11, 12, and 13. It is taking the number 1, 2, and 3. It is passing it to the add 10 function, and it is then returning the value plus 10. Keep in mind, the function doesn't actually have to be within the function. This is just for the example. You can have a function anywhere. You can even swap this out with a lambda, but we're not going to do that in this video. All right, so if you've been pausing the videos up until now, this one's going to be a tricky one. Definitely keep up the good work if you have been able to solve deconstructing and reconstructing each one of these list comprehensions. So for our last two examples, they're not exactly what you should do, but it's what you could do. And again, it's always up to you to decide how you would use it and when it's appropriate to use a certain method. So looking at line five, we have a variable paid. It's going to be a list of numbers. And in there, we're just going to store one, two, three. Imagine paid is how much you paid. You had a data that says you've paid this much money. So in in our case, we paid $1, $2, and three. And in our return, it's incomplete. We have a four underscore in range of three. The reason I'm putting underscore is because it doesn't actually hold any purpose for what we're about to do next. It's just to show you that you can do a loop within a loop to create a list within a list in a sense. So to achieve this, we're going to create a, another temp variable, but inside of the list comprehension. Using more brackets, we're going to say 
x4x in a paid. So now we're looping twice. We're looping the initial range, zero to two. So for on iteration zero, we would loop one, two, three. Iteration one, we would loop one, two, three. And on two, we would loop one, two, three. And we're just returning those values. If we run that, you see that we get one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It is possible to store lists within lists. Think of the range as trips. You've taken three trips and in those three trips, somewhere in data, you wrote down that you paid one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Well, something you may actually do with this example would be to wrap it in a sum to get the amount you paid per trip. So we can wrap sum here. And if we run this one, what we what we get here is three sevens, definitely a lot better than what we had previously. I. Not that superstitious, but that still bothers me. So again, as a practice, you definitely want to break this down, deconstruct, reconstruct. What would this look like? Not in a list comprehension to understand when you can convert, when you might want to convert, when you might not want to convert. Now for our final example, you are able to do a nested loop. So not only are you able to do a list within a list, you can also do a nested for loop. But for this example, I actually wanted you to have an idea of what you might use it for. Maybe not. Who knows? So let's say you had a database, a list of names. So in our names list, we have Tom, Bob, and Sarah. Then we have ages, which is linked by the names. I made sure to put it out of order so you can see that it's not in the same order when we're looping. What we want to grab is the value based on the name using only list comprehension. I did a little outline so you can see what a nested for loop is. It's when you do a first loop for X in list A, and then you have an inner loop for Y in list B. So you're looping through the first list right now we can go ahead and return the name so that we can see them on screen. Let's go ahead and build our nested for loop here. We have our output, which is name, and then our loop for name in names, which is going to be our first loop, the for X in list A. Now we need to do our for Y in list B. To do that, you would put your second loop behind the first loop. So let's go ahead and write for key in Aegis. If you want it to print out the key, you could. And what we're doing here is returning the key. So we're looping through the ages three times. On iteration Tom, we're going Bob, Sarah, Tom. And then on iteration Bob, we're going Bob, Sarah, Tom. On iteration Sarah, we're going Bob, Sarah, Tom. And we're just outputting that key each time we go through the iteration, which is why we have a total of nine. Now we need to filter based on the name value. So to do that, we need to check if the key is equal to the name. So if, if key is equal to name. Now we're checking if the key is equal to the name. So when we go through our first iteration of Tom, Bob, Sarah are not equal to the name. So those will not be included. We'll just grab Tom. If we run that, you'll see that we are now only getting three results because we're only matching the name. So Tom looping through Bob, Sarah, Tom is only going to match Tom. Now we have the key. If you haven't seen my dictionary short, it's not as clean on audio as my audio is now. I'm still a work in progress. You can check out what we're going to use next and why you might want to use it. We're going to now get the value from ages without directly accessing because that is technically bad. So instead of saying key, we're going to say ages dot get, and then we're going to pass in the key. And again, check out the video if you're not familiar with this one here. This is our safe way of using the key to get the value. If we run this, we get the ages in the appropriate order. Tom is the first iteration, which is 25. Bob is the second, which is 47. And Sarah is the last iteration, which is 32. All right. As you can see, this can get a little bit tricky for the eyes, which is why I wanted to write it like this. It might not be bad to you. It might be horrible to others. It's always up for you to decide. If you're still following with challenges, definitely make sure to break this one down, build it back in a standard form so that you can understand what's happening, where it's happening, the placement of it. That'll help you with the first part of how to use it and just a little bit of the second part of how it works. All right, so we are now finally done with the video. Sorry if it was a long one. If there was anything that I did wrong or something that you could do better, leave it in the comment section below so that we can grow together and we can all learn. If you have more examples that you do want to provide for everybody as well, leave that there. I'll try to post as much content as I can, but it has been quite busy. So if you like the video, give it a like and hopefully you might subscribe.